So this is the OnePlus 8T. Now when a phone is in its initial release cycle, there can often be a number of bugs that hang around and that impact a reviewer's experience of using said phone. And so two months after the OnePlus 8T was initially released, after a number of software patches, I'm finally bringing to you my review of the OnePlus 8T. And let me say right up front, this phone is nearly perfect. Let's chat about it. In terms of design, I've got to say, this might be my favorite looking and feeling phone of 2020, but that strictly applies to the Luna Silver model, which is the one that I've got. So with this model, you get this beautiful matte and frosted finish on the back, which looks and feels incredible. And I really like the colorway as well. It isn't this in your face blue that's become super common in smartphones this year. It's much more subtle and in some scenarios, as the name would suggest, it actually looks more silver than blue, which I think looks really pretty. I even like the look of that freshly designed camera unit on the back as well. And so overall, it's just a really nicely designed back of a phone. Now, aside from the back, we also have glossy metal rails around the edges of the phone. The buttons are incredibly tactile and clicky as they are on most OnePlus phones. And then what makes the phone even better from a design standpoint compared to the OnePlus 8 Pro released earlier this year is that flat display, which just makes usability so much better in my opinion. Speaking of that display, the 8T gets a bump up from the 90 Hertz panel found on the regular OnePlus 8. And now we have a 120 Hertz panel, which puts it right in line with the OnePlus 8 Pro in terms of speed and fluidity, albeit with a slightly bumped down screen resolution, but you really cannot tell unless you're a pixel peeper. As with all of OnePlus's higher end phones, the 8T's display gets really nice and bright. And whilst the colors do have that slightly oversaturated look to them straight out of the box, if you head into the display settings, I found setting the screen calibration to sRGB has made it look much closer to the Pixel flagship panels that I've always loved because of how they render colors. So a really, really fantastic display, top shelf stuff for sure. And I'm happy to report that speakers and haptics on this phone are also incredible. You get that dual speaker setup with audio coming out from the earpiece as well as the bottom firing speaker. And the haptics are right up there with the best. If anything, I would say that the haptics could actually be dialed back a little bit just to make them that little bit more subtle. And I'm pretty sure this is something that could be addressed in software. And whilst we're on the topic of software, the OnePlus 8T ships with Android 11. And that actually made me a little bit nervous because OnePlus infamously redesigned quite a bit of the Oxygen OS skin with the Android 11 update. And when I saw screenshots and videos posted online when it was first released a few months back, I did not like what I was seeing. But believe it or not, I've actually come to really enjoy this version of Oxygen OS. In some parts of the UI, it's not quite the Oxygen OS I knew and loved from prior to Android 11, but it's also definitely not as bad as I once feared. It's still far superior to Samsung's One UI skin, no offense Samsung, but the inclusion finally of an always on display and a dark mode toggle in the quick settings, they've been enough to actually make me really enjoy the software experience. In fact, given how superior the OnePlus launcher is in regards to customization, I honestly think the software is what could keep me using this phone as my main device going forward. Touching on performance for a moment, and look, in terms of specs, this phone is stacked and the performance is ultra smooth. Really, really nice experience. And this is actually the first time that I've enjoyed using an in-display fingerprint sensor. I took some of your advice on board and I actually enrolled my thumb twice and I think this has seen some serious improvements, enough to make me actually enjoy having an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is very much so a first for me. Now in terms of battery, for a 5G phone running constantly at 120 hertz, and keep in mind I'm a user who likes to set my display fairly brightly throughout most portions of the day, I would say it's an A minus, maybe B plus battery. On average, I'm getting five and a half to six hours of screen on time each day, and I've never killed it in a day, though I have gotten fairly close on one or two occasions. So it's definitely not a more than one day battery for a user like me, but a solid performer nonetheless. Now, as expected with the non-pro versions of pretty much any OnePlus device, one of the biggest areas that leaves little to be desired are the cameras. And I think my biggest gripe with the camera performance of the OnePlus 8T is with how it captures images of people. I'm someone who likes to take a lot of portrait photos of my kids or of friends and family. And I just find that the portrait photos taken on the OnePlus 8T just have this sort of 
unrealistic, but also somewhat unpleasant look to them. Now that said, I've actually found that installing the Gcam mod on this phone has improved the portrait photos situation considerably, enough to make it almost a non-issue for me. You can hopefully see on screen the differences in how the Gcam mod processes its portrait photos versus how OnePlus processes them, and I just vastly prefer how the Gcam mod does it. There is even a version of the Gcam mod that allows you to access the ultra wide camera. So I'll leave a link to that specific version down in the description below. But aside from portrait photos and just general images of people, the OnePlus's cameras perform really decently. Just make sure that you give the sensors a lot of light and you'll be able to capture some really impressive results. If you're in any sort of scenario where there's less than optimal lighting conditions, then that's where the images will start to fall apart. But video also performs reliably well, particularly from the main sensor. And so really in conjunction with the Gcam port, I'm pretty well satisfied with the camera experience on this phone. So there are two main features that are missing from the OnePlus 8T because it's not their top end pro model. And they are an IP rating and wireless charging. So firstly, an IP rating is kind of neither here nor there for me. OnePlus still puts in most of the protection that allows their pro models to get that IP rating with their lower end phones. They just don't pay for the rigorous testing process. And so this is kind of a non-issue for me. But wireless charging for me is a missed opportunity. And it's what takes this phone down just one peg from being pretty much the perfect phone for me. Now it's not a deal breaker, but I would have loved it had OnePlus thrown in even just a slow wireless charging coil. And that's how they could have differentiated it from their pro models. This one has slow wireless charging, the other has fast. Happy days. But sadly, it's not here. And I do think OnePlus has missed a trick by not including it on this phone. So with all things considered, the OnePlus 8T has actually become my new main device. And it's the first phone of the year to finally convince me to switch permanently from last year's Pixel 4 XL. We'll see over extended use, how I handle the slightly subpar camera performance. But aside from that, I'm feeling good vibes about this phone. And if you're looking for an upgrade, well, this phone is a seriously good bet.